yes uh, you have uh, uh, sought to bring out or you have uh, tried to uh, bring out how dharma is being conceptualized in scriptures and uh, you have tried to bring out its meaning and relevance and its practicality and um, uh, that uh, experience uh, experiential perspective of dharma and uh, how dharma was conceived by seers and it uh, continued down over time so all these things uh, are the very fundamental dimensions of dharma and uh, that way you have very elaborately and deeply sought to bring out all these uh, different uh, dimensions of dharma and more on its practicality how one's uh, activity or behavioral patterns should not obstruct or put adults in enjoying the freedom and the rights of others so it is more important when come to practicality this is more important our activities and the behavioral patterns and the mode of thinking should not be an obstruction should not create hurdles so there we need education and learning and you know awareness creating awareness in this respect therefore we are thankful to you uh, professor rajini madam and uh, thankful to you and uh, because of the paucity of time we will uh, move to our uh, next uh, session and uh, next session is uh, an uh, overview of the conference and uh, uh, our uh, thinking our uh, our uh, what uh, future in initiatives our thinking on future initiatives so in um, uh, you know within a small framework time framework because uh, professor kumar reknam and others are waiting for the validity session therefore uh, uh, this is very essential a overview and a future initiatives on the basis of this overview therefore we can continue this uh, humble initiative and exercise therefore i invite uh, professor batsa uh, to start with uh, and i request uh, panir shubhan sir belram ji uh, dipti ji uh daveji sashumar sir the sabas etc uh, panishal sir you are here you are here i i hope uh, to in a precise manner how we can put it and uh, uh, thought over thanks learned scholars and other dignitaries let's recall that uh, we had a very fruitful deliberation during these uh, three days our deliberations were uh, both uh, theoretical and practical theory and praxis go together uh, we had uh, revisited the noble and uh, sublime value schema initiated by vedic seers we have pointed out as to how these uh, values are uh, conducive for a peaceful happy prosperous and uh, meaningful social order cosmic order as well as individual life the vedic seers had a holistic and a integral approach to life and reality and that's why they could have had at that time very smooth and happy individual and social life lord mekale has referred to this point huh? and it is worth noting how during he says that his uh, extensive visits to each and every corner of india he won't find people unhappy 
miserable, no thief, nothing like that. Well, uh, a foreigner who is uh, having an anti-India mindset could opine that way. Same thing uh, I read uh, uh, in a, a booklet of Hindu Swaraj of Mahatma Gandhi. There is an appendix uh, by a Britisher. And he also narrates the same story. So it's not a uh, some sort of a figment of imagination. It's not something an expression of a self pride, uh, self arrogance, etc. Well, this was the hard fact of reality at that time. But now, thereafter, we find that uh, there is no social harmony. There are many problems which uh, individual and society are facing. And therefore, this causes worry as to what has gone wrong, where it has gone wrong, how it has gone wrong, and how to rectify it. Well, we are not uh, just concerned with uh, analyzing the past uh, or analyzing the causes for, uh, of course, causes have to be analyzed, but we are more concerned with the remedial measures how to rectify the situation so that uh, that pristine glory can be reestablished. That pristine glory which attracted uh, all scholars from all over the world to come to Nalanda, Takshashila, Vikramshila and many other Indian universities. Well, uh, what was the reason for that? They didn't come for nothing. They didn't come as a tourist. They came here with inquisitiveness to learn from India. But now, what is the situation, present situation? In fact, uh, it's uh, something which is uh, a matter of serious uh, concern of uh, all those uh, who matter in this uh, particular uh, area. And therefore, uh, we had uh, these uh, deliberations. As an outcome of that, uh, we came to one conclusion, and that conclusion uh, was uh, put forth uh, uh, by Professor uh, Balram Singh that uh, we must meet quite often, more often and uh, take up uh, one issue at a time, analyze it thread where, and uh, come to some. Uh, concrete, uh, definite uh, conclusion and uh, put forth that conclusion for the society or for the government, if the government cares for that. So uh, this is the, uh, I think, uh, uh, a very good result that we could reach uh, on the basis of uh, our deliberations. We touched upon uh, different facets of life and existence. Point, pointed out, uh, we also analyzed our past uh, references uh, to uh, our Smritis and Puranas and uh, Vedas, Prasthanatra were made also. But uh, mere revisiting the past will not be enough. We have to relive the past. I always uh, insisted upon uh, uh, lived experience. We have to therefore uh, uh, see to it uh, that uh, the ancient wisdom gets translated. First of all, it should get disseminated all over the world. And then uh, it is translated into actual practice. Uh, if uh, this can be done, then definitely the world will be an ideal place to live in. Heaven is not somewhere else uh, transcending the worldly life. Heaven is to established uh, on earth itself. And uh, uh, to make the earth heavenly means that uh, let everyone be happy, let everyone uh, be joyful, let everyone be healthy, and uh, uh, let everyone be swasthita. The idea of a swasthita, swasthita self situated, as I cited Yoga Sutra earlier, Tadadrashtuhu Swarupe Avasthanam. So let us be self-situated. Uh, uh, it means that uh, uh, we must be swavalambi, we must be atmanirbhar, 
Well, these are some of the values which uh, our present prime minister is insisted on. And therefore, uh, uh, let us uh, 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 say reformulate uh, these ideals to make to give them a concrete garb, yeah. concrete shape. Uh, and uh, if that is done, then definitely our webinar will be fruitful and uh, purposeful. So uh, let us hope that uh, we can meet uh, more often with some uh, definite suggestions, concrete suggestions, not mere theoretical analysis. Theoretical analysis we have done quite a lot in the tradition. <laughs> we have, you know, plenty of literature is yeah. there. Uh, uh, we have what should be the structure of society. So we have been citing Manu. We have uh, read Manu, we have read Yagi Valga, Parashar also. Uh, we have read uh, Kautilya's Arthashastra for social and uh, political order. And uh, uh, in the field of uh, Ayurveda also, we have read Charak and the Sushruta and many such. Enough literature is there. Yeah. Uh, but what is needed is uh, making use of that literature. Uh, in Jain tradition, Chetana consciousness is uh, defined uh, as Upayoga. A very good, rich and wonderful idea. Chetana is not mere theoretical analysis, but it's a practical counterpart. Upayoga means putting it to use. It's, it's a rich concept of which Jainas themselves uh, have not properly uh, understood. But uh, 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 we have, therefore, uh, to make uh, our consciousness uh, 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 universalized. But that universalization does not mean annihilation of the self. Aham is there. From, uh, we have to, to take Aham as a spreading ground. And from Aham, we have to pass on to the Sarvam. It's a, it's a universalization of the self uh, and uh, that is the Indian tradition, okay. it is the Vedic wisdom and if that can be translated into practice, I think uh, we will yeah. be doing great service to Indian culture and uh, uh, Vedic wisdom. Thank you. Yes, shall we go to the next one, sir? Sir, please ask. Who else will, who else will speak next, please? Well, Ramji, well, when you want to put forth your uh, ideas, when right now, or, no, 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 no. Do you want to hear others and after that you want to put forth or right now? I'm, I'm happy to do that. Yeah, well, then, so, when you're still one, sir? Respected friends, uh, now we are... Uh, very near to the concluding uh, session of uh, the program. Uh, three days, uh, very thought provoking uh, seminar, webinar. And uh, I was very much fascinated to attend to most of the lectures. Yesterday, I couldn't attend many because of uh, I had some other webinar which I had organized, so I had to be there. One thing which, uh, which uh, has been stressed here is that uh, going back to the tradition and how tradition can be interpreted re and reinterpreted for the sake of humanity. In fact, uh, Professor Bhattarji uh, has uh, very rightly pointed out that uh, how our tradition and our culture and our value has a uh, a major role to play in the future of the human society. In fact, uh, it is very much essential for us to go back to our own. Uh, here, I would like to say that, uh, of course, the knowledge of the West is very much essential. We can't deny that. But uh, we have to be rooted in our own tradition. And this is uh, very much uh, important in the context of uh, uh, contemporary approach. In fact, I would uh, I would uh, further say 
putting uh, uh, Jesse Bhattacharya because an idea, a well-known article wherein he talks about uh, how the hybrid culture will not help us. Sir, sir, we have to go back to our Indian culture, especially the Vedic and Upanishad culture, which has got social relevance. In fact, Professor Bhatji just now pointed out how the holistic approach is very much this has been very much stressed in Indian tradition, which has been neglected, I must say. Because uh, we often uh, feel proud to quote uh, thinkers like uh, Arne Nias, uh, the shallow ecology, deep ecology, everything. But if you closely observe our own culture, Indian culture, all these are very much available. That's what uh, Professor S.R. Bhatt, when he say, talks about the holistic approach, it is a it is a all into the one. And I think uh, there's a need of Rava to go back to our own tradition and highlight some of the important aspects which has not been uh, properly looked into. And secondly, I would like to uh, stress here how our uh, Professor Sebastian G has pointed out uh, the humanization of uh, uh, Dharma. The humanization process is very much essential. I here in this context, I would like to remember uh, the book of uh, Professor uh, R. Sundarajan. Uh, the title of the book is uh, Humanization of Transcendental Philosophy. But he applies this to uh, phenomenology and argues uh, the need for bringing it down to the earth. This is what uh, I would uh, like to interpret uh, his uh, philosophical humanization of transcendental philosophy. A philosophy which is transcendental in nature has to be brought back and we have to show how it has got a link with the, our present uh, way of life. So this is something very much uh, connected to the practical way of understanding or the practical aspect of dharma, which is quite often ignored. Just now, Professor Bhatji very beautifully said, we have been theorizing all the time. We have lots and lots of theories, but where is the practicality? And it is high time for us to practice uh, the concept of dharma and also at the same time interpret and reinterpret. And I will, to one more point I would like to stop. Uh, what would be the future initiative? What should we do? Because now we have been uh, addressing ourselves, addressing others, and we talk about uh, various issues. But uh, are we taking this further in a proper way? This is my uh, very obvious. In fact, I shared this with the uh, uh, Professor Gopinath number of times. How do we make this relevant to the present day society? We are talking about uh, the uh, the phenomenological understanding of Karnagar Guru, for example, but uh, we have not taken, I mean, I would like to submit here, we have not taken proper initiative to propagate the philosophical discourse which uh, our Guru has uh, uh, talked about. So, so our future initiative or further initiative is to spread the knowledge of wisdom. In fact, uh, we are not talking about, uh, about uh, knowledge system. We are talking about wisdom system, wherein wisdom is highlighted in Indian philosophical tradition, uh, especially in the open tradition. So it is high time for us to relook to our own tradition and show how it has got uh, a practical relevance. And uh, here I would also agree with uh, some of the uh, great uh, professors who said that a monthly dialogue is needed so that we can take this uh, further in order to show its relevance. So with these few words, uh, I am grateful to all the great uh, philosophers and scholars who have contributed substantially enough uh, for uh, sharing their the knowledge and also deliberating on the very important concept of Yoga Dharma and showing the need for reinterpreting Yoga Dharma. Thank you very much. Uh, but sir, uh, 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 Professor Gaudam Patel, but sir, can you hear me? But sir, but sir, can you hear me? Hello? Professor Gaudam Patel uh, wants to make some points. So, Professor uh, Gaudam Patel, Professor Gaudam Patel,
Professor Gautam Patel. Yes, Gautam Patel is speaking. Uh, would you would you would you make out your points in a few minutes? Yes, sure. Hello. Yeah. Huh? चलो कहते हूँ बोलू चलो हेलो 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 गोपीनाथ जी कुड यू हियर मी या वी ऑल कैन हियर यू वी ऑल कैन हियर यू ऑल राइट कैन आई स्टार्ट या थैंक यू वेरी मच Krishnam Vande Jagat Guru, respected Bhatsa and friends, Manu has said, "Etad Desha Prasutasya Sakashad Agra Janmana Swam Swam Charitram Sikshiran Prithivyam Sarva Manava." He says that the Agra Janma, the scholars born in this land, that is Bharat. let the whole world may learn about their own culture but sir in his first day referred to a vedic slogan manur bhava and my friends that line goes further it says manur bhava and then says janaya daivyam janam give a birth to a divine person in you if you became a perfect human being then and then you can create a divinity in yourself in surrounding and everywhere for this today what we are teaching to our student is something which is very very against of our ancient indian theories of knowledge sa vidya mukti we don't teach anything for mukti in our whole curriculum there is nothing like adhyatma or spirituality adhyatma vidya vidya naam as it is said by krishna that vidya among all this vidya adhyatma vidya is said we are teaching students economics physics chemistry biology all these thing but nowhere in curriculum we find that how you are supposed to be a human being that we are not teaching that we have to teach for that we have to make our students self conscious i remember one night instance in mahabharata where krishna appears for the first time and the first verse what he says is very important he appears in draupadi swayamvar and he saw pandavas sitting on other side he pointed out his brother was with him he pointed out to him that that fellow who is sitting there on the other side is arjuna and then he says yadyasmi sankarshana vasudev o vasko sankarshan mean to his brother he says parram he says if i am vasudev then he is arjuna now see krishna is very much conscious about himself because in bhagavad gita also he says vrishni naam vasudev osmi our students have lost their own identity they are the children of divinity they are children of rushis they have all great tradition but we are not making them aware of this all rich tradition in our society in our past and so friend what is knowledge knowledge is a burning torch each generation receives from the former transmits to the next and that to brighter than ever before it is our duty to transmit whatever is in past was good to the future generation and otherwise the future is not going to forgive us my friends in india even kama shastra surprising all shastras were there but the fruit of kama shastra the result of study of kama shastra was put like this asya shastrasya gnataro mukta bhavanti na samshaya the vidya even you know kama shastra better it will be liberated so the sense of liberation is lost and our students they are almost under the west see what a surprising that 31st december comes thousands of people Come on the road 
they are drunk and then misbehave all these things may i ask just a simple question is there any nation in the europe or everywhere they celebrate your diwali or new year nobody and yet we are so no that is not good see dharma and vigyan vigyan has progress but unfortunately they are not when darwin came up to human being and we are going from humanity to divinity from ram to krishna from ram to krishna is humanity to divinity and so my friend we have to teach to our students that how we can be a human being apakraman manushaya vrunano devyam vacha ved says apakraman get out of manushaya whatever is human and select the divine words divine words of krishna are there divine of rushis are there and we have to make our generation conscious about it other and so i think that it is our bounden duty to see that the sense of spirituality also develop in our new generation and say for example kyate na bunji tha gandhi ji insisted this and you all must have forgotten it all are to grab money by by borrow or steal or bribe but that is not true we want people to be human our seminar should be here to inculcate what is what called humanity and only one point i just tell you which was discussed about kal Mr. Dave has pointed out Kal is Ishwar, Kalosvi, and and, and Atharveda. But Atharveda, but there is one more thing. Kal ha Ashvo Dhavati. He says the horse in the form of time is running constantly. But next line is Tam Aro Hanti Vipashchita. Those who are vipashchit, intelligent enough, they can ride on this. horse and we have seen that our rushis vyas valmiki ram krishna mahavir buddha shankar or ramanu this all are vipashchita and they are beyond the limit of kal so one can conquer kal in this sense and so we have to also in this yuga dharma we as a leader of the society or as a part of the society are supposed to teach our students what is right what is wrong because science and religion but we should progress with the eye of religion and wing of science so science without religion is blind and religion without science is lame so we have to find out way by which science also there but at the same time and should not be forgotten dharma should not be forgotten and but unfortunately in whole of our curriculum from right from first standard to phd we hardly find anything that we are teaching to our students to be a human being or a dharma because they have lost the fear of god my friend who is god i would say i have created my god to keep myself in control if i have the fear of god i won't do anything wrong but people those who are not having fear you see around us what wrong they are doing and therefore my content is that i fear god but i fear those more who do not fear god and such society will de- definitely perish so we must create a sense of the fear of god and and a sense for the following our good past the whatever best is there we have to infuse it in our student the fi- our culture is like a ganges it ever flowing it's never going to dry up this is what my gurudev swami gangeshwar has said that it is ye ganga ka pravah hai kabhi sukhne wala nahi chota mota hoga lekin sukhega nahi and so and we are fortunate that we are born in such a culture and we hope that we bring whatever best was there again then perhaps 
he will be again vishwaguru such seminars are really helpful in creating such atmosphere i congratulate iccr i congratulate bad sahib i congratulate gopinath ji and i i thank all friends who are here i also who gave me my name to gopinath and so on and thank you very much and let i pray the god that he give us a strength by which we can add something to the burning torch of knowledge by which our ancient knowledge becomes evident to each and every one in the society thank you very much thank you gautam ji thank you but sir yeah janak dave ji uh, and the uh, final yeah. concluding guess, remarks by professor uh, yeah and then now we uh, balram balram singh balram singh ji and now we have dave ji sebastian sir uh, a few word, words by dr tp sashumar then only then uh, it will have a completion yeah and uh, we have to start the validity function soon and mm-hmm. however uh, patel ji is uh, concerned and anxiety excitement over the state of present state of affairs is to be uh, looked upon seriously and uh, yeah addressed seriously thank you now i think daveji uh, yeah i i just want to point out one very important thing that uh, professor but has you know told us and uh, you know that is about pachi hamara webinar ma hu chu making you know our can you can you uh, uh, listen what i'm saying am i audible yeah uh, okay so you know how how to you know transmit this very rich culture that we have here and friends you know most of you must have heard the name of akshardham delhi and i just want to give one example of a great scholar from usa mr jack holly he is a great scholar who has written on surdas and tulsidas and bhakti sampraday and he came here and his book was to be published and i took him you know to our exhibition hall and the exhibition hall number 3 which is a boat ride through civilization of india we start you know from the vedic period and there is a statement that our culture is almost 10000 years old and then from there you know we take uh, throughout and we show you know the progress in ayurveda we show progress in the yoga and other things he is a very senior person and very serious person and he told me mr dave if you don't mind can i ask one single question i said yes please he said how can you say your culture is so old and then i told him sir have you heard the name mahargad and he said no i said sir mahargad today is in pakistan it is near baluchistan and pakistan's border and french archaeologists had you know started their work in 1974 and they worked for 20 years and they found out there you know the grains barley and other things which according to carbon 14 method was 7500 bc and this is about the french archaeologists who worked in pakistan and mahargad was a part of india like the whole of pakistan and afghanistan was a part of india and whenever there is you know the agriculture whenever a hunter becomes a fruit producer a farmer then he has enough time to think about it and this is what i i can show you and i showed him all the evidences i had so we have that culture we have that history we have we must you know put it before the people and in small way akshardham delhi has started putting it where you can see you know progress of india but at the same time as professor but has said and other scholars have said in our school in our college this subject should be introduced in such a way that our students at present and future will realize what which legacy we had and how we can you know further transmit it to the whole world i think you know we should do something like that and i am very thankful to professor but and mr pillai for giving me an opportunity thank you sir uh, sebastian sir a few words sebastian sir sebastian sir are you present yeah he is very much present 
regarding our future initiatives as well as a, a brief overview overview how do you look at it well i am i am very happy i was very happy about about to say i mean i have been attending the last three days very seriously but the you know the general theme i mean to my understanding is the, um, uh, is the guru tradition i mean to say you know subject of self knowledge that is supposed to be the theme of the new tradition and we have been talking about that tradition has to be what to say reawakened and you know i mean i mean i i, I may be wrong i i would say that knowledge is the original consciousness prior to any state of consciousness that is affected by dual to ignorance see if i look at the yajnamalikya i mean chapter 2 of of prakadaran uh, upanishad where there is duality there one sees another there one understands another there one hears another where there is i mean you know ida ida you know ida the yajnamalikya team is that no see he was talked about a consciousness an original consciousness i mean a non dual consciousness the consciousness is you know you know there is no it is conscious about nothing but itself okay this is the guru tradition and this is self knowledge and i would say that you no know, this um webinar should be able to i mean should be able to evoke some kind of response towards this consciousness wherein we can we can go back to our, our tradition the wonderful tradition and people have been talking about many many things let us try to you know there are certain things which we have uh, which, which the history has committed mon kari do to baat mein koi bhi kharab lag gaya but we are not able to the mistakes which were committed no i think you know we cannot have any progress my point is that very simple that you know the brahma vidya or self knowledge see i think uh, you know in the the brahma sutra bhashya okay again chapter 2 you know you know what is self knowledge you know i mean for mm-hmm. us the knowledge of self which is what after has not arisen so long the self is a knower but the same knower turns out to be self the word of ibrahim blemish and i pray to the almighty that this culture this beautiful culture this tradition i mean i mean this land should be able to what to say guide maybe the entire world maybe by you know by giving by you know promoting a culture which is of unity harmony and uh, integration thank you so much wonderful so but sir we have to start at 8:30 yeah. uh, we we have deepthi tripathi ji tp sashumar sir uh, let uh, but validity is we will start at what time uh, we, it would be better if we can start at 8 10 so i i request tp sashumar to make his observation then so we will go, go to the tp validity yeah. yeah. then i ask the balance ji namaskaram to all of you my name is short form dr tps i am dr tps and my concern is always on tps teachers parents and students and i am sure the underpinning of this conference is how the education system can make a difference the january 2001 i started probably being a human human being being a social social being investing maximum time with society understanding the students teachers and parents probably reached out to almost equal 1 million students 1 million teachers 1 million parents of late i was attending conferences and webinars like this probably that could be the best way to connect to people and learn the theoretical aspect i find most of the theoretical aspects are being discussed but practically it's not contributing anything 
द सरसम विच वॉज टोल्ड द सरस्व दिस कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन विच चेंज टू गवर्नमेंट विल हैपन ओनली वेन वी हैव वैल्यू एडेड स्टूडेंट्स इन द नेक्स्ट जनरेशन यू विल कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट इन द गवर्नमेंट विथ लॉट ऑफ विस्डम थॉट्स टूडे वी आर हियरिंग लॉट ऑफ मेडिसिन इज कमिंग एंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूटिंग ड्यूरिंग द कोविड फिफ्टी परसेंटेज ऑफ the farm product which is used in medicines are produced only in india maybe 25 percentage of the medicine the whole world the farm contribution goes from india apart from the medicines the inputs for medicines are also going from india in the other part of the world that is the time when we have in delhi the farmers are striking and government is not able to distinguish what is dharma what is right what is wrong that is because basically our education system is whatever teachers say whatever the textbook says is to be accepted as it is without questioning probably that is the confusion today when the social media or the politician speak people accept it as it is because they lost the discrimination power viveka vivechana buddhi education system need to be having three parts that's what i believe one is on language the language not in terms of language but in terms of how to communicate well to everyone to the point specific crisp and clear second one is logic that could be mathematics i am a mathematician so i believe the basic science understanding is with the language of mathematics and another one is life skill there is a i keep saying there are three l requirement and two l requirement is learn to learn the pathetic situation teachers teaches information and they never teach how to learn maybe we have lot of examples and we can keep on finding fault with uh, makale and uh, all the other people but what are we doing i am sure there are great things which we can do the swadharma kudumba dharma professional dharma samuha dharma rashtra dharma to the vasudeva kudumbagam concept which is very much in us we are sure we want the materialistic life the maslow's principle also talks about the basic needs and then goes to self actualization i think the next generation is blessed enough because they have got all the well being the life material life but what is required is we need to add some values to them but that understanding in today's education is very very difficult to give the new education policy probably i must have given hundreds of talk in different academics uh, arena because many people call for lectures because they wanted to fill up the form they wanted to say that somebody is called with some education who was part of ugc so i was also part of univers uh, uh, gravi uh, commission so i was called in many places i keep saying there is no difference the new education policy is not offering anything we had system where the veda padam started in the age 3 my guru completed all the vedic studies by age 7 and today that new education policy says we should start education at 3 and then finish by 8 so five years basic education is again implemented or again stressed the sarvakalashala the university education which was started by sarvepalli again coming back so what is the point in talking about all this this 26th january inaugurating my chain of grandma child care center grandma is old grandmother the old wisdom in hyderabad with a great personality support with the pragati resort which is supposed to be you can google and find out it's a huge land of 1000 acres the covid time i have invested sufficient time understanding the farm that is why i could quote a little thing about farm though i was in a farm i was the son of a farmer i lost contacts because of the new education and the higher education in the practical contemporary education but then i went back to my roots now i am trying to implement and minimum 2030 schools i am planning to start and the inauguration is going to be on 26th january in the pragati resorts my shiksha uh, uh, trust is called shiksha 
and pragati you know what is pragati the progress the resort itself is called pragati and my trust is called shiksha so pragati shiksha is going to start together with the grandma child care center which is my concept of sharing like teaching from home and i am planning to probably train in the next few months hundreds of teachers who will become the new teachers with the progressive mind the pragati mind with the basic tradition shiksha this is practically which i am going to do i am sure most of my listening when gobinath ji asked me to pay, present a paper i said no because i want to listen and i was creating total notes to understand what probably i can take some lessons from here to make my syllabus for my teachers so so far last 20 years i was on lecturing before 20 years i was on government service so i took my retirement after 20 years with minimum pension and now the next 20 years i am going to be practically active in implementing i believe that we have to have the real life where where we can contribute something to the society though i was talking to them short term programs but i need never had any of my own activity but that is what is going to happen physical five fold development physical emotional intellectual social and spiritual development in the ways of swami vivekananda's messages and that is what is going to be done and this is what i wanted to tell you and probably there are people from different part of the world i'll be so glad to put you into somewhere in the advisory board or maybe part of it i have got a foundation called the social craft foundation in which i think only jayanti sahu is part of the philosophy conference in which i met her and she started communicating with me constantly and then she gave me a lot of platforms to talk and she is part of one of the fellow there so we have got fellowships being given i wish probably some practical applications which i am planning to do i want all of your blessings and pranams to each one of you for motivating me with your words and i want some more people to motivate with their actions and then contributions in terms of knowledge so thank you thanks a lot god bless you goodbye all of you probably i will not be there with you any or on the webinars because i find that i have lot of actions to do so thank you <laughs> so, so you have to disseminate this, this is, is a platform, platform through which you can disseminate your practical experiments therefore uh, find it as a very useful platform but i don't most of the time it says we have got so and so so and so people last few words from dr tps ಬ್ರೆವಿಟಿ uh i totally endorse what dr tps that is dr chakri kumar has said uh we are not training students we are not training people we are not teaching people to grow we are disseminating information at all levels from the primary to the highest level of education and dissemination of information obviously is not going to lead to development of personality and development of society therefore a i would suggest that a lot of emphasis needs to be given on training in language because language is a tool as well as a um mode of dissemination now you think through language and if you don't have a developed language faculty your thought process gets dwarfed because you don't have the tools to develop the thought process it's a very interdependent uh, thing you have through language you develop your thought process and your thought process leads to the development of language system we are not teaching language at any level therefore some emphasis has to be given on training in language at all levels so that we have thinking minds 
who can also communicate. Secondly, uh, we have taken away from our education system any quotient of moral teaching. Because at some point of time in the history of education after independence in this country, uh, moral education was equated with religious education. And therefore, all sorts of value system inculcated in young minds was taken away from the content of uh, education uh, syllabus that was there. So I would suggest that some form of value system must be inculcated in the young minds right from the beginning so that they develop into a wholesome personality. Uh, as I said, I would be extremely brief. These are two points which I thought I would like to share with this August audience over here. Uh, the only concluding remark that I would like to make over here is to the Vedic saying, Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina, Sarve Santu Niramaya, Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu, Mark Kashchit Bhag Bhavet. And uh, all of us who have studied the scriptures know what Sukha means know what Dukkha means. And therefore, I have concluded by these words, Sarve Bhavantu Dukhina, Ma Kashchit Dukkha Bhag Bhavet. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak. Thank you, Professor Gopinath. Thank you, all the scholars who are here to give beer with me patiently. Thank you. No, Professor Balram Singh, I think. Huh? Professor Thank you Balram. Uh, very much. It's wonderful points that have been made. Honestly, I shouldn't talk anything anymore because it's just plenty said. But since um, Dr. Gopinath wanted me to say a few words, and as I have said before, I have uh, some difficulty without having some uh, coming from science, not knowing that much. I always try to take um, help of some slides. So we'll see when my slides show up. In the meantime, I think even though we discussed so much, even though we discussed so much, we still have had uh, issues with some understanding. One of I one of the commentators mentioned about fear of da, uh, God. I think the fear of God is not an Indian concept. Uh, because we think that Aham Brahmasmi, it's me who is everything. Then in that case, there is no question of fear of God. So what I find, in and this is, uh, I commend uh, Dr. TPS uh, for, you know, making things really more active rather than more action oriented rather than just talking about it. But nevertheless, um, in society, I think even if he didn't come and tell us something, we wouldn't understand as much. So, Vaad and Samvad is very important. And I think that I want to commend Santi Giri and Dr. Gopinath because I've been there before, I think a couple of years ago. And they have something that is in practice, but they also want to, um, to discuss, interact, and perhaps learn and teach others, which is Dr. Deep Tripathi just said the teaching is very, very important, I think. So, um, and the question is how, what kind of teacher, who will be the issue and how, how to do that. But the one major thing that I raised uh, as a point during the, uh, the panel discussion is the translation. You know, how we translate, translate from what we think to what we say, translate what we know to what we teach and translate uh, various kind of cultures from different places. So if, since it is an overview session, I would like to just give an overview that, you know, even the time passes, you know, we are running probably an hour late, but because all we are engrossed in it and, and it's worthwhile if we can have some patience also to listen to others, even though maybe they are a little bit late, which is very common. If I live in the United States, there is the Indian time here. 
uh, which is normally runs about an hour late. You know, but there is a you know the, it's just if you want to have some fullness, there is a Brazilian time which is about 24 hours late. So I think we are probably much better than Brazilians. <laughs> so nevertheless, there is a the some discussion we have had about karma and dharma, dharma particularly. I have already spoken about my view about translating religion and dharma to each other and how the dharma is created uh, by karma or karma is determined by the dharma. And uh, then they only when you be connect them, we can make uh, karma yoga. And when yoga is, is uh, practiced, then we are in a situation where we can understand and perhaps be uh, what dharma is, what dharma, what our nature, dharma means nature, several speakers spoke about that. So, so basically, the karma, in, a, in the best possible way, whether we learn, we practice, we do, we act, and we unite eventually, it is yoga, karma, kausalam. And the interesting thing is that while, while I was working on this, and, and, and perhaps uh, Professor Tripathi can think about this, I, I'm, I'm using Sanskrit here, and I'm not in the in the field of uh, language, but I am a chemist. I tend to make words uh, and from their letters, and then try to understand the meaning of it. So you guys really expansion elevated, you know, expansion when you are in elevated situation, and then where is, this is how you work. Then you come and connect with everybody, and that is how it also comes as yoga. And this can be translated into into uh, physics. Uh, where the work can be defined as force and uh, force time distance. Force is the direction, and direction is something that a guru gives. The guru itself is a very complex word. You know, the guru is somebody who knows. Guru is somebody who sows. Somebody, guru is somebody who guides. The guru is somebody that we follow. That no, so many, and then we are, we are all different people. So the same thing here in the in physics and science. It's no different. Although I know Dr. Santa. Uh, was talking about science uh, is not, you know, the limitation. And also some somebody else also spoke this this, after, uh, this, well, uh, this afternoon for you, yeah, evening, uh, that, you know, uh, science, where science fin ends, where the philosophy begins, which is also kind of true, that the translations are very important for all of this. And we are all human beings. There are so many aspects of our life that we see that we have social aspect and then we have individual. In the social, we start with the individual. Then we have economic aspect and some of us talked about, you know, poor, there are poverty, there are practical things that Professor Bhatt talked about. And then how do we deal with it? There are capitalistic society, there is a communistic society. Maybe there is some other kind of view that we need to bring it, bring it out. Right now, we are, we are running with that using the business if the current government which is a nationalistic government talks about you know how they want to increase gdp and then we communicate and which is we are having wonderful time of communication where we are able to connect i'm quite far away cannot travel but still i'm able to connect but then there are some issues with that communication uh, with technology that people are using and misusing we have a language, you know, we, there's so much uh, effort here to talk about the language, very important because as a culture is in the language, but this is very foreignized. I mean, I, we are all talking in English, or most of us actually talking in English, and that's so we need to have a translation there. We have entertainment, which is quite westernized, and um, I wouldn't go into detail, but because this is so obvious to everybody. We have politics. We, we are now, we worship democracy. We need to understand, we need to translate that democracy into the cultural milieu and philosophical ideas and uh, practical traditions. And we have a religion, which is religion uniformalizes. You know, we talked about uh, some uh, religion, uh, Sebastian, Dr. Sebastian was talking about how Christian, Muslim, Hindus, Buddhists, they all come to Santigiri and there must be something that is for everybody. But religion, by definition, is uniformalized. And is as the health is related somehow the chemical base, and there was a good discussion I mentioned about you know how we need to maintain our health. And finally, <clears throat> sciences. The there's something that I come from. It has been reductionized. You know the, what we practice today. Science is very reductionist view, not the holistic view. I think they all can be combined in in terms of dharma. Why I understand there is a discussion about yoga. What is the time today? This and call. And but nevertheless, I think those who can get above in the in the yuga, you know, they they are able to expand themselves by elevating themselves. 
I think they can see it all and gurus are very important from that point of view. And so when we look at that, ultimately it comes from education and learning. And, and I think it has been amply emphasized in this conference, I think, uh, is one very great step towards that. I want to make a couple of points, uh, either misunderstanding or not translating it well. So here is an example of science, which is collaborating with philosophy and uh, you can call it spirituality or I, you know, sometimes those translation, what is adhyatma versus what is spirit, spirituality is also different. But nevertheless, here I want to just make a point that people talk about God and it has been considered in science, published in Proceedings, National Academy of Science, one of top journals in the world. And then there's the question they asked, you know, I wouldn't go into detail of explaining this fMRI thing, except that, you know, when you see the two spots, that means there is a difference. And so they didn't ask people exactly what uh, they think. They just recorded what they think. And they found that people say what is self, uh, one sees about some moral values versus what a typical American, they found difference. When they said that there is a, what God thinks about some certain things and what typical American thinks, there is a bigger difference. But when they ask this question, what what self, what one you think and what God thinks, there is no difference. So everybody has their own individuals, have their own idea. And isn't that called Aham Brahmasmi? It's I mean, a different way. I understand that Guru will tell what Brahmi is and will understand. But at the very practical label, everybody thinks what, what they know is what really God knows. And isn't it that the very uh, basis of the Upanishads and, and Vedic knowledge, even uh, Arvind Schrodinger, who got Nobel Prize for quantum physics, and he read so much and he wrote about it, Atman and Brahman to be the same. Of course, it's same doesn't mean that you realize that realization is that that is something that you need to go through education and through gurus and through the people who know about it and they're willing to work with you. And then maybe, of course, reading and understanding and listening to conferences also, perhaps sometimes even at least you get uh, some level of inspiration. Now, the basic narrative of physics, physical science, I just said the science is great. And now let me go back to say where the science may have some problem. Uh, even science for that matter, you know, the science in general is observation, you know, observation with both philosophical and mathematical to play some role. They play very, very important role. The, the concepts play a role. Philosophy plays a role. But it has to be observational. And... Uh, and then they go through this process of reality. You have to have a real thing before, no matter how great thing somebody tells, whether it's guru or not guru, unless you realize it somehow, either by perception or by belief or by faith or by observation or by uh, seeing it in your own life. And then when you see that very on a regular basis, then you somehow start thinking, oh, there is a system. And then it, when you see other people also having, it looks like, oh, this is a common thing. And then we believe in it. And then it becomes a normal. You know, if you know, don't do something like that, it's something abnormal. And this, you have to realize that these realities change with time. And uh, with yoga. And because when you set a standard of that uh, fixed in some other time, then it becomes a problem and absolutely need of a guru at that point. Because guru is somebody who can translate from one time to another time, one place to another place. So the standards will have to be different. I don't think the content has to be different. It's the convention of understanding has to be different. There was some discussion about content has to be different when the when the yuga changes. No, I don't think the content changes because we are human beings, we remain. But as convention just change, you know, how we ex understand. And then you be eventually be idealized. When we idealize those things, ideal things like sanatan, dharma, and that should be uh, true everywhere. Many of the current scientific ideas, including quantum thermodynamic genetics, they all have gone through this process. But the real issue always remains, remains what, how to connect this reality to ideality. This is an entanglement that scientists, scientists as well as across the fields that, you know, uh, we have been debating for the last three days, it appears. And then how to, to deal with that? Here is the concept of whole Brahmand and then whole planet. And then you have a whole society and then you have the your parijan or relatives and then you have the whole kutum or clan and then you have the family and then you have individual this is just a reality this is just exists 
and one has to find where one uh, is is uh, located at a particular time and then only can understand what one doesn't know and you know maybe if you have one reaches the brahman level then one has to sometimes bring yourself down which is, i think a, a, a great guru would be able to do there are so many examples of those that they will be able to know the whole thing and then bring it down to the individual level and that is a call teaching or sharing the information or guiding people now india has had very long past when there is nothing more great in my opinion than the fact that india is a very special geologically a very different country which is for 10 million years is a, is a connected to the asian continent with himalayas and wouldn't go into so much details about you know how that really is affecting here because this is just an overview but nevertheless the cycle goes on because very long time so you can see change keep see, seeing the changes and one can take examples and this is very important point i wanted to make and that important point is been this is raghuvans you know those of you cannot read uh, sanskrit or or devanagari lip is raghuvans and raghu kul raghu nayak raghuveer is what is known as ram and so i, I mean, he is very still very relevant somebody just mentioned that ramayan happened 7000 years ago or whatever you know we still have very old history actually the history uh, professor nilesh oak talked about you know 22000 years before or whatever even longer than that and then there is a yuga cycle has much much longer than that but anyway something that it happened at least thousands and thousands of years then we are still remembering and that i think we need to understand the value of that what exactly is the value and the one of the values i'm sorry again it's written in i'm taken from tulsi ramayan from uttar kan said parahit saris dharma nahi bhai when you focus on others in service then that's the biggest dharm it it doesn't have to be it doesn't matter which yug if it is parahit then you are going to have dharm that's a constant the other one is raghukul reeti sada chali aayi pran jaye par bachan na jaye and which also again means that you know you need to keep your word which means you need to think what you say and what you say has to be practical and dr uh, tps was talking about practical is more more important and uh, and and then you can create a system called prajatantra and again i do not have a whole lot of time there is a difference between prajatantra and democracy democracy is anybody praja means you have educated people you have guided them you have made them self reliant you have made them understand things and there you have made them free you have made them depend self dependent or or uh, uh, having their own uh, independent system and if you want to look at that if that to be a goal then you will find the establishment of dharma on planet not just in india not just in our house which is important that we do it in our house but it is the goal has to be some bigger not for governance you know it is for just for people service not for keeping the next generation not for keeping it for the next generation as some people have uh, pointed out during this conference that we have people who supposedly otherwise very uh, great philosophy whether the communist or socialist or or congress or bjp whatever they but they define that they they want to keep it for next generation and not for taking over it or controlling but it, that is the a tradition that indians have in practice and raghu is one of those examples Ra, uh, samrat raghu he was a chakravarti king but when he he has conquered you might say in some way the entire planet at one time but he always donated back it to the people rather than keeping it for himself and i think that is called service and the only thing at that time for chakravarti king was to be able to um established dharma for everybody you know everybody means including plants animals and human beings um i have little bit different ideas i did write a book i thought i will advertise a little bit here is expensive book so you don't have to buy you can take a picture of this um and then on the cover that i have said is the nri view of india in the tradition of ram krishna and gandhi and i call ram and krishna as nri because i am nri and if one can figure out that puzzle i think you don't need to read the book but if you don't maybe it's you it's a good coffee table book it's cost about 2000 rupees and you can get it from mlbd now so the last few points what i want to do is to see where we are in a system 
as a bestie where individuals are involved and our psyche our mind is very important which is uh, to educate and all the efforts that we are making so that we can serve the society deal with the society uh, understand the environment be affected by it be sensitive to it and be caring of it and then samasti is this the whole thing then only we can understand because there is no way we can otherwise at least ordinary people can connect with that other than the environment and society and their with their mind uh, with full understanding this is in physics this is the concept called system and surrounding physics thermodynamics e- exactly believes in this exactly believes in that i don't have time to go into detail but exactly all the concepts are believed in there and this is the also uh, vedic view of yat pinde tat brahmande because once you understand in your mind then you understand the whole uh, brahmand the whole universe and how to do that well we have vasudev kutumbakam the idea of vasudev kutumbakam and but you know when people talk about vasudev kutumbakam and then they talk about nationalism that's a problem there is a contradiction and it needs to be educated for that also and one one has to do is make it internationalism you know for example india if you wants to as a country you want to do something you have to make it internationalism and then you have to think of in service of the humanity the moment you get to into the uh, considering a duty as a service of society then it expands so how do we do the service today i think there was some discussion about it uh, ayurveda and yoga is world order now the world order is a very common uh, phrase that people have used world order has changed for last 1000 years you know there was a christian world there was a islamic world there was a um uh, the the world of british empire and and then the communism the capitalism all these are considered world order so i suggest that we work through this because this helps people and people are familiar with that ayurveda and yoga as world order which would mean the la- have a natural uh, living you have to connect to the nature so for example we have in india we have shukla paksha and krishna paksha but what we really practice is unnatural although i think it's a legitimate is the concept of the week you know you have mon- sunday monday tuesday wednesday there is not written this is not in, in ancient at least in india it's not written like that because this is this has no connection to nature the seven days have no connection to nature but the pakshas the shukla paksha and krishna paksha because they connected to the moon moon be no moon affects us so this is a kind of world order uh, steps one could go to the in also the conduct is very important again i don't have time to go into very detail but you can see and most of you obviously know and i, I mentioned to you about democracy and prajatantra this is the difference in prajatantra you s- demonstrate to people by your action and something like dr tps uh, just uh, mentioned about it in democracy basically divide you divide everybody to hindu muslim christian men women uh, poor and and rich and all kind of you know this is tamil telugu kashmiri <laughs> and all all kind of people you know that you divide because you can see that in practice that's what is happening so that's not the system but many times people even misunderstand because the translation is not done well and then you can be doing only by teacher now this i i take this picture i i run one teacher training program here american teachers in high school and middle school and they they are taught how to teach india and dharmic tradition particularly to their students because that's teachers are the best to tell students properly as to what it is and i think that that kind of uh, imp- uh, aspect is very important and and of course you know uh, a, a situation like what we are in today right now i just took this picture a few moment ago uh, this is an also a, a fantastic way to connect and and try to do the communication with that i would like to uh, one make just one last point and the last point is that uh, again related to dr tps is saying that in action is very important and action is absolutely very important actually some people have uh, several times quoted sang chadvam sambadadvam in i don't know that much sanskrit as dr uh, deepthi tripathi knows about grammars but i know in sanskrit i have been told that you in sanskrit you can write the words any place it doesn't matter in the sentence the meaning remains the same that's the greatness of the thing but nevertheless when the the order is written if can be written any way then if the order is written that's more important why is that order sang chadvam sambadadvam when say sang chadvam sambadadvam it means you need to go first then talk about it which means in do the action first then talk about it and the last point that whatever you talk about you must listen and do the same 
because if you don't listen to what you say yourself nobody else is going to i think this is the major thing that we need to think about how to proceed with this idea uh, we need to discuss of course on a regular basis but i think more important even one single person if you will x i think it will be much bigger communication than any but if we our our efforts can inspire few to act and go around the world or go around the universe and propagate this idea by showing them action i think we are so grateful and thankful thank you so much yes. so but sir but sir yeah so you have uh, belram ji you have brought up all the aspects which we discussed and which uh, how we should uh, go ahead so no we have, not in yeah. linguistic function huh? yeah 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 so this uh, this we will summarize and we will put into uh, you know um, black and white and uh, one more request uh, we request uh, all the participants to write their papers because this uh, yuga dharma and uh, its uh, relevance it will be very not only catchy but it would be very contributive therefore uh, two three months like that so belram ji said they may require more time but however uh, we request that we write a papers so that we can bring about our first volume in this respect and future actions we will initiatives so we will uh, you coordinate and uh, share thank you and uh, uh, thank you all and we will go to the next uh, last our uh, last session validity session and uh, so our, i request uh, our uh, uh, chief guest is uh, present our icpr uh, icpr chairman member secretary professor member secretary hi sorry sorry member secretary kumar rectum ha ah, sir sorry so so let me let me initiate over this so what is so i i welcome uh, welcome address by professor rajeshwar nayar uh, i invite rajeshwar nayar to make a, a welcome address uh, i think we have already crossed uh, the indian standard time so i will be very brief uh, let me uh, welcome on behalf of uh, shantigiri research foundation uh, the distinguished speakers and also the participants to the, to this uh, concluding uh, session uh, the validatory session uh, they need uh, no introduction last three days we had an in depth uh, examination of various issues uh, regarding yuga dharma and i am sure this will come out as a publication as well as pave uh, the foundation for uh, future work uh, not just theoretically but with uh, practical implications as well i think both theory and uh, practice are important uh, the, the practice the, the praxis of uh, the, the whole notion of yuga dharma uh, let me formally uh, welcome uh, professor kumar ratnam member secretary icpr uh, he has given us uh, all hearted support and has attended our previous programs many times i don't need to introduce him uh, to this audience uh, he will be delivering the address a uh, concluding address uh, i am sure we will be considerably uh, enriched by uh, your presentation in giving a focus direction to the notion of yuga dharma welcome sir to this uh, session let me also welcome on behalf of uh, shantigiri uh, dr pooja vyas director of icpr uh, research center uh, lucknow who will be chairing the session uh, welcome madam to this uh, uh, session Uh, over to dr pooja vyas for the uh, remarks uh, chairperson's re remarks and uh, are also for conducting the meeting over to dr pooja vyas thank you thank you actually is there yes sir yeah yeah my order as quick as Uh, professor bhat sir uh, professor uh, kumar ratnam sir uh, gopinath ji and other dignitaries uh, of, on this program uh, thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to share uh, some thought with you on this special and important uh, theme of the yuga dharma as uh, mentioned uh, in this uh, webinar actually is going on many of you on this uh, theme 
uh, has been discussed with the and all the learned scholars uh, within two three days and uh, actually the time with the time constraint i'm um, uh, not going to take so much time and uh, especially uh, when we talk about uh, this yuga dharma uh is uh, one of the most uh, and one aspect of dharma is we understood uh, we hin uh, by hindus and yug dharma especially uh, which is the having the aspect of dharma and that is that which will be valued for the yug also and now we are going uh, now we are discussing the reforming and relevance of this yug dharma uh, by considering uh, many things in uh, this topic and especially uh, when we talk about the sanatan dharma uh, which is not the subject to the change uh, and now we are discussing about the changing or reforming uh, the dharma in the uh, present time or maybe the changing the uh, things accordingly uh, with this time era especially uh, all the uh, talks uh, which were concerned uh, especially uh, mainly smriti puran anusmritis and uh, gita also so there are many things that hindu religion uh, may be reform in this uh, yug dharma as a reformative sense especially we will uh, say something about this uh, yug dharma um mm, what i think that the hindu dharma uh, apni jo bhumika hai usse na to kabhi piche hata aur na hi kabhi chhut sakta hai kyunki uh, is hindu religion ki hindu dharm ki buniyad mein kahin na kahin shashvat manviya char achar aur sabhi ke kalyan ka jo ek bhav chupa hua hai jaise abhi professor bhat bhi hum sab logo ke samne rakh rahe the सर्वे सर्वे भवन्तु सर्वे संतु का मूल उद्देश्य जिसमें समाहित है निहित है और जो देश काल के अनुसार उसकी भूमिका को उसकी प्रासंगिकता को बदलता रहता है श्री कृष्ण ने भी गीता में निज धर्म में जीने और मरने की बात करते हैं व्यापक अर्थ में व्यक्ति समय के अनुसार अपने कर्तव्य का पालन करते हुए इस और हमको आगे बढ़ने का इशारा गीता की शिक्षा के माध्यम से भी मिलता है वही बहुत सारी चीजें अगर संक्षिप्त में ही मैं अपनी बात रखूंगी कि कृष्ण ने रजोगुण तमोगुण सतोगुण की बात कही तो वह भी व्यापक दृष्टि से न सिर्फ व्यक्ति तक सीमित है बल्कि वह सारी बातें देश काल में उन गुणों का जो प्रभुत्व हम धीरे धीरे खत्म होता हुआ दिखाई दे रहा है उसी तरह से उस युग धर्म को आज के समय में निभाना वेरी इम्पोर्टेंट बहुत महत्वपूर्ण हो जाता है आवश्यक हो जाता है इसीलिए आज के समय में नकारात्मक भाव को हिंसा को संकीर्णता को पर्यावरण की प्रदूषणता को ऐसी बहुत सारी नेगेटिविटी ऐसी बहुत सारी बुराई जो विश्व में व्याप्त हो रही है ऐसे समय में इस धर्म को अपनी शाश्वत मूल्य का पालन करते हुए उस सेवा भाव से कृष्ण के द्वारा जो अर्जुन को दिए गए उद्देश्य है विस्प्र भाव में जो युद्ध धर्म निभाने का एक समय आ गया है और इसी बात को मुझे लगता है इस वेबिनार के माध्यम से विभिन्न विषयों पर बहुत ज्यादा विचार मंथन किया गया इन दो तीन दिनों के बीच में और निश्चित रूप से इस वेबिनार की सफलता इसका मंथन अपने अपने युग धर्म की भूमिका को निभाने में हमें मदद करेगा ऐसी मैं आशा करती हूँ मुझे आप सब लोगों ने अपने बीच अपनी बात रखने का अवसर दिया उसके लिए सादर धन्यवाद भी देती हूँ थैंक यू no we may invite professor kumar ratnam to give the validity at this thank you sir last three days we are discussing about yug dharma in relevance reforming hindu religion i am audible yeah very much in this webinar i am very much excited rather to listen the philosophers 
of that esteemed repute field, like Professor R. S. Hutch, my spiritual guru. Since last two years, when I met to him, I am considered to be my spiritual guru, and always his blessings, affections is with me. I think it is my third participation in any function of the Shantigri Institute, Research Institute, is doing very well. On the topic, the relevance of Yudharma in reforming Hindu religion, I feel that nothing is to left to discuss over here for a student of a history of art. Basically, I am a student of history of art. Undoubtedly, previous scholars talking much about it. You, dharma is karma and karma is dharma. It is a fixed term. What as the Guru Golvarkar says, the Yuga Dharma is one aspect of the Dharma as understood by the Hindu. Yuga Dharma is the aspect mm -hmm. of Dharma that is valid for mm -hmm. the Yoga epoch or the age as established by Hindu traditions. The other aspect of the Dharma, Sanatan Dharma, which is not subject to change, as Dr. Puja also remarked. What Vivekananda says, the other said comprise the minor law of our everyday life. Even in India, these minor laws have been changing all times. It is Dharma. For the last, say about more than 10 or 11 months, what I feel about the Yoga Dharma in the pandemic period, which you wonderfully handled by the government of India. And in comparison of the other developed countries, we are standing like anything. Our Honorable Prime Minister has given the slogan of Atma Nirbhar Bharat in such a pandemic period. That is the Yuga Dharma. India serves all of the world humanity. Some previous uh, scholar remarked that 25 percent of the medicines we are producing of the world. That's in that matter, we are serving humanity, which is Yudharma, what I feel. And being a student of history of art, Ram Sutra. Rightly speaks to give a only one direct sloka for the painter. Roop of Hed Pramana Lavalne Yojanam Sadar Sivarnika Bhang. He Kamsutra decides the duty of the artist as a Muni, a Yogi. In Samrangar Sutadhar also, he speaks that artist is a yogi and his yoga dharma to perform, to prepare a painting to give a life. Jeevan Dena Krati Me Ek Yogi Ki Tapasya Ki Saman. In that perspective, when we have discussed about the concept of six limbs of the Indian painting, that is the yoga. That is the Yoga Dharma. In this perspective, we can say if an artist who is going to create his creation through a painting, there must be a life. That is Yoga. That is Dharma. In that way, India is a multicultural country. Several scholars speak about the culture, humanity, spirituality in this regard and discuss in a detail. I will not go to in detail. 
and the some scholars particularly the previous one the last comments and the dr tepachi has remarked about the educational system also what is the yog dharma of a teacher has been discussed very much as for the new national education policy which has been introduced in the month of july or rather give a for the first time a national educational policy so far, i can say in that policy the all the problems already been taken up very seriously i'm very happy to share here for the first time the is of the class 1 will study the philosophy of india that is bharat both it is for the first time so far i feel number of times about more than 100 times philosophy and culture word has been used in national education policy it is a good sign it has been discussed by a mathematician philosopher previously moral moral values dr tripathi ji remarks this is a very important vidya patatam dehi vinayam dehi in this perspective also the new educational policy focused upon the value based system education system in that way we can say that we are in the right perspective world guru vishu guru in this educational policy national education policy much has been discussed i hope that the every aspect related to to, to the dharma yog dharma has already been discussed and i am being a student of history of art i have not having i have no wish to say that i have no had so much knowledge about this philosophical term what it is very acceptable that dharma iti dharyate if every citizen of the country accept it understand to understand it then the our seminar will be fruitful and the re- result of this seminar will be fine so lastly i would pray to the god for the success of this seminar and the issues which were discussed in this seminar come in the society and will be helpful to the society and the nation too i congratulate to professor pillai and his team for organizing such a wonderful Yeah, and I have already prayed to him in the last webinar to kindly send me the papers, and I can assure on behalf of the honourable chairman and members of the council, I will try best of my level mm-hmm. to publish them. Please send it positively, and I also request to all the learned scholars help Professor Pillai by sending their. esteem scholarly research paper for the sake of the country thank you very much i jai hind jai bharat thank you professor kumar reknam for your kind words we will get all these papers and we will publish it thank you